Kia ora, year 12 and year 11. This is the third video I'm doing going through paper um, 1-3 from the June 2021 AES Pure 1 paper. So in this video I'm going to do two questions that are on um, ones on functions and graph transformations and then the next one is a binomial expansion question. They're both I think a little bit harder than the first two videos that I've done so make sure that you have a good go at these questions before I go through them. So in the first question we're given two quadratics. We've got f of x here and g of x here and we're going to have to link them up together. So by first expressing each of f of x and g of x in completed square form express g of x in this form here. In other words, get, get g of x as a transformation of f of x. And you can do this with algebra, but you can also do this by just thinking about the graph. And that's what they want you to do in part b. So describe fully the transformation which transforms the graph of f of x to the graph of g of x. All right, so let's have a look at what we've got. Well, we've got f of x is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 5. And if we complete the square on that, we get x minus 1 squared, take away the 1 that we added in here, plus 5. So that gives me x minus 1 squared plus 4. So if you think about that one, um, what's going on graphically, well, we started with a basic parabola here, and we shifted it one unit that way and four units up. Okay, and now we're going to look at g of x, and g of x is x squared plus 4x plus 13, and that works out to be x plus 2 squared, um, take away 4, plus 13. So if you're not really confident with that, I've done a video for level 2 maths on completing the square, so go search that one up. That gives me x plus 2 squared plus 9. Okay, so that's the first part of it done. So what we're asked to do, let's just go back to the question. We're asked to express g of x in the form of some transformation of f of x plus q. Okay, so f of x is where we take something and then we take one off. We square it and we add four. So we can think of g of x as being something minus 1 squared plus something plus 4. And if you think about it like that, it makes it pretty easy to see what's going on. If we have to end up with x plus 2, then we're starting off with an x plus 3 take away 1. And if we have to end up with an, an x, a blah blah plus 9, we're going to have a plus 5 plus 4. So g of x is equal to this, which is simply f of not x, but x plus 3 plus 5. Okay, so what we're saying is to get to g of x, we're going to have as our input into the f function, x plus 3 plus 5. Now we can check that back and see if it matches up. What do we get when we go f of x plus 3 plus 5? And for most of you, this is probably feeling like overkill, but I think um, it's worth doing. So my f function is take x in and take 1 off it and then square it. So here we're taking x plus 3 in, and we're taking 1 off it and squaring it. And then the next part of the f function is to add on 4, and then we're adding on 5. So that gets me x plus 2 squared plus 9, which is g of x. Okay, so it's a very long approach to that question. Now let's see what's going on graphically with g of x. Well g of x is one where we've shifted two units this way and then up nine units here. And so we've got a parabola that's hanging there. So this is now getting extremely messy. Let's undo this and do the graphing part a little bit better. 
So we'll start with a ruler. So you could do this if you haven't already done this for the second part of the question. Right, so f of x is where we're starting one, one over here and up four. Right, so my vertex is sitting here. So it's been transformed from the basic one, out one and up four. Okay, and then g of x is where I've shifted from the basic parabola back to here and then all the way up nine. So what we're asked in the second part of the question is to describe fully the transformation which transforms the graph of f of x to the graph of g of x. So we started off here, out one this way, and we want to get to back here, out two. So we've got to go three units to the left, and we were already four up, and we've got to go up to nine. So we're going to have to go five units up. So here's how you can answer that second part of the question. Well, you can see it straight away from the work we've done here already. So f of x is shifted three units to the left, or we could say in the negative direction, and up five units, or we could use vectors. So it's being translated, so the translation vector from f to g is negative 3 for the x direction and 5 for the y direction. Or you could do it with two translation vectors and you could say that the first translation Actually, you can do the translations in either order, I guess. So the first translation is back 3, so left 3. And the next translation is 0, 5. Now, I can't think why you'd say that, but that kind of breaks it down into two steps. And the order of the translations doesn't matter. Lots of different ways to answer that. Make sure that you really do answer that in context, though. Okay, so talking about units and directions. Okay, so now we're going to look at question 7, which is a binomial expansion one. So write down the first four terms of the expansion in ascending powers of x of this thing here. So I'm going to use Pascal's triangle to do this. That part is very easy, so that's just two marks. And then in the second part, we've got the thing we had to start with multiplied by this. And we're told that the coefficient of the x squared term is negative 20. So we have to find the possible values of a. So this is a matching up the coefficients exercise. So let's take a new page to do this. The first thing, whoops, that's not a new page and neither is that add page. Okay, so we've got a minus x to the power of 6. So the first thing that I do when I'm working with a binomial expansion in AS is this. So in the AS syllabus um, you're always going to get this with a, a positive power. Um, people watching this who are starting out with A level pretty soon we'll be working with negative and fractional powers in here, which in some ways makes life easier. So I'm looking for the sixth row of Pascal's triangle because that's going to give me my coefficients for my expansion. So we've got 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, and 1. And so this is the sixth row, so that's what I'm going to be using for my coefficients. Okay, so a minus x to the power of 6 will be a to the power of 6 plus 6 coming from here. So 6 times a to the 5, negative x, right, plus 15, a to the 4 times negative x squared plus 20, whoops, I don't need the bracket, not enough coffee in me yet, guys. So 20 
a to the 4 times negative x, no, a to the 3 times negative x cubed, plus, how far do I have to go? I have to go to the, oh, there's four terms, so we're done. So dot, dot, dot is all I've got to do here. Now I'll clean that up. So a to the 6 minus 6a to the power of 5x plus 15a to the 4x squared minus 20a cubed x cubed dot 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 that's the first part done now for this next bit what we have to do is figure out the coefficient of x squared so we're going to have all of this stuff times by 1 plus 2 over ax so 1 plus 2 over ax times a minus x to the power of 6 is equal to 1 plus 2 over ax times a to the 6th minus this. So let's not expand all of it out. Let's just think about what we're told. So we're told that the, oh, I don't know what's happening to my smart pen. What's it doing? So we're going to match on this term here. We know that the x squared term has a coefficient of negative 20. So where is that x squared term coming from? Well, the most obvious place it's coming from is the 1 times the x squared term in here, right, which is this one. So that's 15 times a to the power of 4 times x squared. But the other place it's coming from is in the expansion, when I multiply the 2 over ax, by the cubic term, that's where I'll get the second of the x squared terms. So that's going to be plus two a two sorry two over a x times negative twenty a cubed x cubed. That's that one there, right? So there's no other place that I'm going to get an x squared term. So that gives me fifteen a to the four x squared minus 40 a squared x squared. So all I'm interested in is the coefficient. I'm going to divide everything through by x squared now, and we get negative 20 is equal to 15 a to the 4 minus 40 a squared. Now we're asked to figure out, going back to the question, what are the possible values of the constant a? So now it should be obvious why we're going to have a few different values, and that's because the um, equation that gives us a is aquatic. So we need to work with that. So you should be able to see that it's actually a disguised quadratic. So that equals zero. We need to find the possible values of a. So there are probably going to be four of them, unless we've got some repeats in there. Dividing that through by five, to make it easier, gives me 3a to the power of 4 minus... 8a squared plus 4 equals 0. And we'll let u equal a squared. So we get 3u squared minus 8u plus 4 equals 0. Right, so this is a good chance to practice your um, solving quadratics skills. You can do that a couple of ways. Of course you can do it using the quadratic formula. Um, I wouldn't do that. Most of you will probably be able to do this one by guess and check especially because this is a prime number. So that means that because it's a prime, we know that we've got 3u here and u here. And we've got a plus 4 here and a minus here. So we must have a minus and a minus. So let's just try doing it um, in our head. So if we try 4 and 1, that's clearly not going to work. And 4 and 1 the other way is also not going to work. Let's have a look at 2 and 2. Does it work? Yes, it does, right? We've got 3u squared minus 2u minus 6u plus 4, tick, tick, tick. All good. Okay, the other way to do that is using grouping or the AC method. And again, I've got a level 2 video on that. If you've forgotten how to do that, you really have to have that skill down for lots of things. Quadratics come up everywhere. But because we did this one or I did this one using guess and check, I'm just going to keep on going. So u equals 2 or u equals two-thirds, right? Either this is zero or this is zero. But u is a squared. 